Hey guys, so if there's anything that this whole SM Entertainment debacle has taught us is to never give up. Because only a few weeks ago, it looked like SM Entertainment and Kakao had had it in the bag to make their SM Entertainment 3.0 plan a success. They're going to ride their way into next month's shareholder meeting. Just in a matter of four weeks, they deposed the founder, you know, the uncle-in-law, and secured a big name partner, you know, with Kakao coming in to make sure that they would have the voting power to be able to execute their plan. And of course, who didn't give up? The founder went over to Hybe. Hybe suddenly went into like fast motion. They're probably like, dig up those old acquisition plans or merger plans that we were thinking of with SM Entertainment. Let's tweak them. And they definitely have not shied away from the challenge. And they definitely have not given up despite all of the other attacks coming back at them from the SM management team. So where are we at right now? Well, SM Entertainment has announced, because they're not giving up still, even after Hype said like, okay, we finalized the purchases, and they even released a statement saying like, you know, thank you very much, SM Entertainment Board of Directors, could you take, you know, a seat to the left and let our people in at the shareholders meeting? The SM Entertainment management says like, hey, we're continuing to announce what would happen if we have a cacao partnership and what it would look like. And it looks as if they're still kind of playing by the playbook that they had when they were in the winner seat. So I think they have to readjust their strategy. But I have some tips for them if they're listening. But if they don't change even if they don't give up it sort of looks like hype is uh gonna win however this is why k drama is so good is that people don't give up so you never know how the end is gonna shape up you know what who's ultimately gonna win and remember guys the mask sale is still on you can get 10% off it's our best discount with coupon code so like tv so all that and more coming up so stay tuned all right so we haven't talked too much about Cacao, because Hybe and SM, they've been running their mouth. And Cacao ha has also stayed relatively quiet. That's also why, you know, when we're reporting what's going on, we have to rely on what they do say. And this week, we did finally see the two parties go into court. Remember, Isuman, the founder, had sued his own company, SM, for making the decision to issue shares only to Kakao to, for them to get up to the 9% bid. Because remember, they have not yet put in any money. Hybe has now officially, as of the end of the week here in Korea, put down the money for 14.8% of SM Entertainment by buying Isuman shares. Kakao still has not done that. Uh, in terms of buying the 9% shares, which is a portion of new shares that the board of directors decided to issue only to them. So expanding the share pool and then also giving them access to buy convertible bonds, which is essentially like, okay, loan us some money and then you can just transfer it into shares if you want. And Isuman says that that is a totally illegal maneuver. So they went to court this week. And of course, in these kind of situations, nothing ever is decided on the first court date. Usually it's like, oh, okay, we met and oh, we need more information. And so this is the uh, delaying tactic. Each side usually wants to delay, but one side probably wants to delay more. So in this case, usually it's the one that's getting sued that wants to delay the most. So SM and Kakao probably didn't give as much information as Isuman wanted. So then the judge will probably say like, okay, we need more information to make this uh, decision or ruling. 
because they want to make sure they have as much information as possible in the first court ruling because they never want to overturn things. I found from personal experience because the judge makes a decision in the first court and then if you appeal that judge in the appellate court, if he overturns a judge's ruling below, that creates a drama between the judges and it affects their records. You know, this is not about justice, it's about their careers. And so they don't they don't want to mess things up. So it's very important that all the information comes out in the first court ruling. And usually it's a very long drawn out process. However, in cases where there's a lot of media attention and there's a lot of hoopla uh, with politics and the government, then sometimes that timetable can be uh, sped up. So the court case, whether the shares, like, you know, how all of that's going to shape up, the court is probably taking a little bit of a uh, wait and see attitude to see whether Hype can just win it without any kind of... Uh, court intervention. So they're probably hoping that Hybe will just be able to get up to 40% of the shares and then it's just almost impossible for Cacao to come in. Now Cacao can just go into the open market and just start buying shares, you know, on you know on the on the on the stock market. And if it's about a billion dollars that it would take, they just got a billion dollar investment. But again, it's a question of whether they want to use all of that money to spend on just SM Entertainment. Now, of course, for SM Entertainment, they would love that. They would love for Cacao to just pour in as much money and match Hybe and become a bigger shareholder than Hybe because their plan that they presented this week really hinges apparently on a partnership with Cacao. They're saying that SM brings the content and Cacao will bring the platform in terms of the technology and really accelerate this connection with the fans and be able to then accelerate the process of their music production and, you know, create this ecosystem where they can have uh, many different uh, monetization opportunities like, you know, games and uh, webtoons and merch and apps and and uh, they had like you know big flow charts and 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 whatnot and so they they're they're bringing out like this kind of a rational business type of presentation the irony though is is that they're still seen as sort of the immature ones whereas isuman is somehow he came out of this as sort of the more mature guy when he started the drama no offense but he started the drama and this is a, another uh, proof that Isuman knows how to play the game better than his nephew and some of the younger people over, I think, at SM. Because the nephew-in-law, I think, did come off as passive-aggressive. And passive-aggressive, in this case, and what I've noticed a lot in a Korean context doesn't work if your message is a little bit too in between the lines. Now, Isuman could also have been labeled as passive aggressive, but I would actually say he was aggressive, but he put on some passive sauce on it so that you knew exactly what he was saying. So it was a little bit unclear with the way that the nephew was making all of these jabs because number one, there was just too many, too many jabs in the recipe. The founder, Isuman, his uncle-in-law stuck to one main flavor and that was Korea's respect for age. He said, oh, I was so hurt by these YouTube videos that he released because, you know, I remember him as like a young 
relative, like when he was a toddler, and it it pained my heart to see him that way. So in that way, some people might say that's passive aggressive. I say that is really aggressive with a passive sauce because you knew exactly what he was saying. He's basically saying like this little punk does not respect age and that does communicate really well with the Korean public and also it seems as if with the non-Korean public around the world. Now this presentation that SM made about how it would look under a partnership with Kakao, the technicalities of it, seems to make sense and would have been fine if there was no hype entering the picture, if there was no sudden corporate battle that just popped up seemingly out of nowhere. It seems like it makes sense, but the question that I think a lot of people will ask is, but can't HYBE do that? And so a lot of what they are presenting then becomes a question of, well, who would we entrust with this type of system? Because it also does seem to be already a multi-label system that HYBE has already implemented. The difference is a bit of the cacao element, which is the technology platform part, but they didn't really get too into the technology platform part in terms of something that could really show us exactly what it was to the ordinary person or to the, even the ordinary business person. Exactly why would I want to take the risk with an SM Cacao when I'm not necessarily sure that Cacao offers something that only Cacao can bring to the table because at the same time, if you look at HYBE, they have tech integration and they have worked well with Naver as a somewhat uh, business partner and investor on like the uh, VLive, Weverse integration, but they're not a heavy handed like, uh, you know, kind of uh, shareholder, you know, partnership type of person, it almost seems as if they outsource the tech. And so in my mind, it brings up the question of, well, if HYBE can just outsource this technology, do we need to have like such a heavy hand from Kakao to come into an entertainment company and uh, have some of the drama that comes along with that and you guys have also brought up you know some of the uh, problems with the distribution of them just trying to use their own uh, melon app platform you know take artists off of Spotify and manipulate music charts and manipulate awards and you know how that might piss off some fans especially when tech if you can argue, if you just need it as a service, you can outsource that and don't have to have such heavy managerial control from your tech provider. The other problem that I have with this presentation was that it looked like SM really needs this. SM is willing to die for this battle, to win this battle. And now it also looks like Hype is ready to die for this battle. They need this to become the mega monolithic entertainment powerhouse for them to survive against like Sony and Universal Music and Warner. But I wonder, is Kakao willing to die for this battle? And when I look at this, I don't see Kakao willing to die. I think they're willing to work hard and they were definitely at the end of January, beginning of February, willing to put in 9% of the money, finding that somewhere and, uh, you know, reallocating staff and making it a priority in the company. But I don't see it as pivotal to their survival, especially when their main business is not this entertainment management. If I went to Kakao once and I was very curious because this was after some acquisitions and it was after they acquired Melon, I was wondering like what, where was their money from? And I'm trying to rack my brain, but I remember being surprised at how small the revenues were from the entertainment division and it was still an ad oriented 
business. So it's like a Google, you know, as much of the bells and whistles of Google there is, you know, all of the different services they provide, if they didn't sell ads, you wouldn't see Google. And same thing with Kakao. If you if they weren't able to sell advertising, then you wouldn't see all the other cool little things, including that melon player. And I believe they said even the acquisitions for uh, the entertainment arms were to get the valuation up because they needed a higher valuation, I think, to attract it. Uh, I think they were in a different uh, investment uh, stage and so obviously they're still pull they're still recruiting investors because they just got like a billion dollars from different sovereign wealth funds and part of that attraction and lure is to say that okay this is a future growth center that we acquired so if their survival does depend on future investments that do depend on having an sm in their portfolio then i would then I would think that perhaps they are willing to die for this battle, but I get the sense that they have more diversified income streams where if it gets to a certain point where this is just too much, Cacao might just sort of back away and find a different avenue to try to recruit more artists. So what is the strategy for SM and Kakao if they really want to win this battle together against HYBE? Here's the thing. They are presenting now, and I know that they were sort of backed into the corner to try to present themselves as less childish and more business oriented and say, you should trust us. You know, we've got the abilities and the skills, but some commentator on this made a very good point about Korean psychology and just in general whether it's korean or not the reason why the bad news tends to circulate more about like demonizing uh isuman or like you know lobbing fingers at each other is it's easier for the public to accept that somebody else is worse for this job rather than now stick with me here rather than putting saying like oh these guys are so capable these guys are you know the guys at sm these guys are so smart and talented because there comes to a certain point and yes this is sad but the general public then starts to feel like a little jealous <laughs> or a little bit insecure or a little bit of like well what they got that i don't got so it's much easier to present a message if you're in a messaging war which this has turned into because now they're a uh, board meetings essentially this is all kind of like internal like all hands meetings and this, this is all internal this this is like supposed to just stay in their conference room it's not supposed to come to us on youtube but thank god it did all of this stuff now has to have a hook into the general public of like now what is in it for the public and that's why they really did in the beginning also i think lead with this is for the shareholders this is for the fans now this is what i think the sm side really needs to be clear on and i don't think they have come up with a uh, like a plan or if they they have they're probably wanting to be quiet about it but hey honey you gotta open it crack open that boardroom a little bit bigger because i think they have to present to us now what their irresistible offer will be to their artists that hype cannot match because the question is why should we go with sm and the sm management and like I said, we can't just go with like, because we're better at this job. We will do a better job at this because either the public won't buy it or even if they sort of buy it, they don't want to because, you know, the whole kind of crabs in a bucket thing. But if you kind of put it in the sense of what will they deliver that's different and because especially in this latest presentation where they said like, this is what... Uh, the music rights management would look like under a cacao partnership it would be a 100 percent sm owned music publishing division that would be a specialized subsidiary so they would have really the power to set the prices set the deal set the kind of cuts so what is the artist contract 
going to look like. They could revolutionize the K-pop industry and then also the dialogue around all of the slave contracts, all of the abuses of K-pop artists. You know, we just recently just had it with like Omega X and even Lee Seung Gi. And they could come out with this stellar artist business model and it has to be, in my opinion, so good that they would offer it to their legacy like 1.0, 2.0 artists first or all of them. But then definitely, it, I think it would mean more if the legacy artist said like, wow, I wish I had this contract when I was debuting or training and I am coming forward and in support of this because I don't want to hear from any artists like in terms of like this whole political situation but I do want to hear from them if they believe that this new business model that would protect the artists really is something that they believe in and that they want then I would be like, okay, Kybe, can you match that? Is that something that you would do? Then I think that would be more of a healthy debate that would help then focus it back on the artists. Number two, in terms of cacao, girl, you got to show up a little bit more to us. You haven't even put your money in. Even if you can't legally put your money in and even if you don't want to buy some overpriced shares right now on the stock market what you can do is get all the people who are dedicated to this project to now be burning the midnight oil to give us a prototype what is this app gonna look like why is this gonna be so much better than weverse why is this gonna be not even weverse but something we never even imagined is it like a Uber plus Weavers plus Airbnb plus a Tesla? Like, what is this amazing tech platform that only Cacao can deliver? And what would it look like? And honestly, a prototype, especially for these smart tech people, they can kind of come up with one enough to wow, you know, enough to wow some fandoms. But we've seen nothing. Like, we've seen nothing where it would concretely show us this is why we need cacao because why can't just hive higher line to do it i mean what's what's the difference and so i think the onus now has shifted where yes maybe in january they don't need to do a prototype they don't need to come out with like an artist contract that's going to revolutionize the industry because you know this is just take it slow and just you know slow and steady it, it seemed like it made sense but we're in a different game board right like somebody flipped up the board we are in a different <laughs> <laughs> just in one month man different different dimension here and so i think the onus is that they need to show an artist contract a business model for the artist one that like i want to see the ses girls come out or girls generation or super junior or shiny i want some of them to come out and be like whoa this is an amazing contract it would make me stay with sm i wish i had it when i was a trainee and debuting why wasn't it there well why wasn't it there that's the aggressive with the passive sauce on it i'll get to that in a bit and then number two we need to see a prototype from cacao on like what this thing is going to look like what sm's platform is going to look like that connects to the fans that's going to blow everything out of the water that is so much better than what hype could ever do then that starts to make people think like hmm yeah you might be better for the job but you can't just say i'm better for the job and then number three the passive with the passive sauce pour the buckets of passive sauce on the aggressive because i thought it was like i said in the beginning i thought it was a little bit ironic that isuman right now comes off as kind of like the good guy and the other kids come off as the brats when he's created this drama to begin with and 
you can't come out from the beginning to say that, oh, he's the one that, because they already did. You're like, he created the drama. He's the bad guy. He's like doing stuff, weird stuff in like Hong Kong. And he's been um, like, you know, taking 6% cuts and, you know, like they, they've been saying all this stuff and it hasn't been landing as strong. But I think if you do suddenly have the artist contracts really show how unfair it was to the ones that brought you the music, then that's all the grave you need to be like, because then the question in everybody's mind is like, well, this seems like it makes sense. And it doesn't seem like it's like it's that much money. Like it, it doesn't seem like it's that revolutionary. It seems fair. Why wasn't this here before? Why were these kids essentially subjected to this type of abuse? And then you start to think, oh, well, mm, that guy. And then the dessert is then you can say, well, guess who's now running off with a bag of cash? a bag of cash, he went to our competitor, he sold off our company, he betrayed us, and now he's running off with his bag of cash. And so that suddenly becomes a message of <laughs> passive aggressive, but really aggressive with passive sauce, because you couldn't do that, you can't do that now without the other steps, because I think most people would just say like, it's, it was his company, he started it, his shares, I mean, it seems a little bit odd that he went to his competitors and yeah, we sort of understand, but you know, he can sell it if he wants to. But now if it, if it looks like that he really did it wrong in terms of a structural thing that you're changing that we can see, then it looks worse for him to be running off like this with his, not just the bag, buckets of cash. So... I think that there is a tall order for SM and Cacao if they haven't been doing this. Like, cause we need to see something. I think we need to see something extremely concrete. And if they haven't been doing this, they got the weekend and they have a few uh, more, more days, I believe, or a week. I think they have a little over a week to get this done. And so I'm hoping that they will be able to get it together. Some of you have been asking like, well, what has Hyde been saying? Why are you covering so much of SM? Well, SM has been pumping out all this information with slide ch like ch charts and slideshows and everything like this. Some of the recent, recent press releases that then got picked up, they made uh, very clear that they want the old SM board members out and they want their board members in at the next meeting and they want the minority shareholders to give them their votes so they're just like saying like other shareholders like you know you don't got that many shares give them to us we will vote on your behalf and lead this company into a brighter future and you know send all those old sm board members to the left everything they own in a box to the left it's the office we bought it please don't touch. They've also made a very clear statement that they do not think that these shares that the uh, the S current SM board voted to create for cacao is legal. They think it's illegal. They think the convertible bonds are also illegal. And so they're on the same side as Isuman saying that they should not be able to purchase that 9%, which of course makes sense because they don't want to have them come in as the second largest shareholder. And we also got the announcement that SM is going to give Kakao Entertainment the exclusive right to distribute Korean albums and music sources, and then also work together on overseas distribution. So in a way, they're already trying to implant roadblocks to a HYBE takeover. It, is still unclear whether 
these kind of agreements can stick. If they can completely stick, then they would sort of be like poison pills. And poison pills are essentially like, hey, we got, you know, if basically they're able to legally like have a hundred year contract and only cacao can do this, then suddenly it seems like if Hype overtakes it, they're just like, oh, but what can we do with this if we can't, you know, distribute the music ourselves? But I don't think it's to the extent of a poison pill. Let's just say it's just sort of like maybe something that's going to give them diarrhea for a week. And yes, SM and Cacao have also been saying that they're going to create this new entity and joint ventures and recruit new groups. So it looks de like it's definitely going to be like a joint partnership. But then again, the question is, is why do we want such a heavy hand from Cacao Entertainment? What does that really bring to SM Entertainment? You know, is this just a compromise just for a political power play in the boardroom? Is it worth it to get the corporate power but then have to share the artistic power with Cacao? And then also, Cacao show us what the app is gonna look like to me that would be the game changer otherwise it would seem to me as if cacao is not that much like as into it you know like the whole marriage analogy thing i think hybe really want to get married to sm and then cacao was thinking like yeah, I want to get married, but, oh, um, well, mm, I think Cacao may be convinced to have some second thoughts unless they show us, look, they're in it to win it. What do you guys think? Put your comments below and make sure you like, share, and subscribe. See you again next time. Bye-bye.